Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Today is the ninth day of the sixth month, the month of Elul, according to the way that we discern the calendar. And again, if you're keeping it two weeks either way, then we understand it's just a di different way of discerning the calendar based on the new moon, or maybe you don't even use the new moon. So. We're just, that's where our dating is. Again, it's the ninth day of the sixth month of the month of Elul, uh, going towards the sixth month when all the feasts start. So we're going to, we, we'll be talking about that more as we get a clo little bit closer to the feast. But we're going to continue our, oh, okay, I didn't date today, is also the 20th day of the eighth month or August of 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. So that's the dating. And again, we're going to continue our expository teaching in the book of 1 Maccabees and the Apocrypha. And for some that don't know, they might, uh, I think I've mentioned this several times before, I'm using the New Oxford Annotated Bible with the Apocrypha. There's many different translations of the Apocrypha. They're going to be slightly worded differently, but they're going to be coming through with pretty much the same message. I'm just going to be doing a lot of reading today, very little expounding a little okay to fill in some of the blanks but because this is all historical you know we as we go through here this left gives us a lot more information on what happened prior to the messiah after they had been cut off the nation of israel had been cut off when there was no prophet being sent to israel okay and we've read that in the context of the text several times because there wasn't a prophet at that time speaking with Israel, so obviously the Father was not directly communicating with them. That also does not mean that he was not con connecting with them individually, because Israel as a nation was cut off, but individually they weren't. Obviously Judas Maccabus, or Yehuda Maccabus, was also having, you know, he was pleasing to God because Elohim blessed him and and and. and empowered him to do the things that he did but he was still in the flesh he still did things of the flesh and we can see that in the scriptures as well but individually the whole earth has never been totally cut off after israel it, some israelites were still trying to follow with the whole heart but the nation of israel and the spirit was not coming down in the temple during these times there's a lot going on you have to really go back and listen to the first part, the second part, the third part to get to where I am today. So don't jump in on this today with no background or you're not going to get anything out of this. Okay? So I would again uh, ask you to go back and watch those other videos prior to watching this. When you watch it today, that's fine, but go back and watch those other videos. Before we get started, I'm going to stand and I'm going to face Jerusalem where the Father has chose to place His name there. Okay, That's why I face Jerusalem. I've had that asked many times. Okay? Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. Father, we ask that your blessing be upon us. Father, we ask that your spirit, your Ruach, be upon us. Father, help it, help your Ruach to teach us what it is you'd have us to know from this text. Father, we ask that you again open hearts and minds. Father, teach them what you have to know. Give me the words to say, Father, let these be your words and not mine. Father, we ask that those that are sick, that you would heal. We ask for those that have lost loved ones, you would send your spirit, your ruach, to give them the peace that passes all understanding. Father, we ask that you would empower us, and, and, and Father, give us our day-by-day -day needs, as you know we are in need of these things. But also, Father, allow us to understand and to truly accept that sufficient is for the day. And then, Father, what you've provided is plenty. And that shelter, food, and all those things are the basics that we look for. Father, again, we ask that you would anoint us, each one, Father, with an extra function or anointing of your spirit today, Father, and teach us all things. We ask that all in your precious Son, Yahusha, or Yahushua, or Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll just jump right into chapter 10. Again, this is part 4 of this first book of 1 Maccabees. And we're going to keep marching through this until we get 
the entire Apocrypha that was in the original 1611 King James. And any of you that know me know that I'm not a King James only, even though I read it all the time. Okay, But I also check it against the, the, the oldest Greek and Hebrew to make sure that the translations are correct. Okay, Because we all know there's things in the King James, such as Easter and the Book of Acts, and different things like that that weren't brought across correctly. Because even if the Protestants did translate the King James, they, if you would have asked any of them, they would have told you they were Catholics, okay, that were in protest to certain things the Catholic Church was teaching. So it's still a Catholic Bible. And I know that makes people upset, but the truth sometimes upsets. Please don't hate me because I tell you the truth, okay? So uh, let's go to the Word at, here in 1 Maccabees chapter 10. It starts out by saying, In the 160th year, Alexander... Okay, here it is Antiochus, his son Epiphanes. Okay, and I may or may not be translating that 100% correct, but Alexander Epiphanes, okay, was prior to, was after Antiochus. Obviously, he was probably named after Alexander the Great. And again, the dating on this, when he says the 160th year, uh, Alexander Epiph Epiphanes, Okay, was 160 years after Alexander the Great had conquered all of Greece and unified it. All the dating in the first in the book of First Maccabees is tied to that. Okay, just like Daniel or they would have tied to King Darius. Or, so let's keep that in our understanding, so we're not confused about what's being said. So again, Alexander Epiphanes, the son of Antiochus, and I added Epiphanes landed and occupied Ptolemus. They welcomed him, and there he began to reign. Okay, so it's telling me at that time he began to reign, and he reigned from this, the city known as Ptolemus. Okay, when D Demetrius, the king, heard, now this Demetrius is the same one that oppressed the heck out of the back of us, or the Maccabees, okay, and the, and the believers that were trying to protect the temple in Jerusalem, okay? So we know that is going on, and Demetrius, he tried to wipe all these out, or his, his the one he uh, followed did, okay? And he heard about Alexander Epiphanes' landing of it, and he assembled a very large army, okay? And marched out to meet him in battle. And Demetrius started thinking, okay, boy, I really... We really oppressed the Yehudim or the Jews, okay? We tried to wipe them out. This came in his mind. So he sent a letter. He said, and Demetrius sent, a, sent to Yohanathan, okay? A letter, which Yohanan or Yohanathan is Yehuda or Judas Maccabus' uh, brother, okay? A letter in peaceable words to honor him. For he said, let us act first to make peace with him, Okay, and he and he's talking about with he's talking about here he's talking about Yehudas uh, or Yohanathan before he makes peace with Alexander. So if you don't know what's going on here, you might get confused by the way this is written down. See, he knew what he had done to Israel, okay, or to Yehuda, the north, the southern tribes, and he wanted to make sure that he made friend made made that uh, that alliance that they had together. Again, you need to read the other, listen to the other parts of this message to understand that alliance. Okay, and so he, he made this alliance with Yohanathan, and he wanted to make get that make that stronger so that he didn't go make alliance with Alexander, okay, against us. For he remembered all the wrongs which he did to him, and he's talking about Yohanathan, Yohanan, and to his brothers, Yehudas Maccabus, and the rest, and his nation, which is Israel. That's what he's talking about here. Or the southern tribes, the Yehudim. Verse 6. So Demetrius gave him, Yohanathan, authority to recruit troops, to equip them with arms, and to, and to become his ally. Okay, he wanted to bring them in closer because he wanted the people of Israel to be for him and not against him. And he commanded that the hostages in the citadel 
Okay, that would be people that were held in the Jerusalem, okay, because this is the citadel. Citadel is like a city on a hill that's easily fortified, and they're speaking of Jerusalem here, okay? And sat and should be released to him. The prisoners that he they had of Demetrius' should be released to him, okay, to Demetrius. Verse 7. Though then Johanan, or Johanan, came to Jerusalem and read the letter in the hearing of all the people and of the men in the citadel, they were greatly armed. Okay, and these are guys here that were not all good. When they heard that the king had given him authority to recruit troops, but the men in the citadel released the hostages to Johanna, okay, just as he had asked, and he returned them to their parents. Verse 10, And Johanna dwelt in Jerusalem and began to rebuild and restore the city. Not just the temple, but he'd already taken it once, lost it, taken it back, okay? He directed those who were doing the work to build the walls, okay, just like what was directed earlier at the first time the temple was destroyed, and encircled the mount and encircled Mount Zion with squared stones. Now, squared stones are hewn stones, okay? For better fortification. And they did so. So he asked them to cut stones that they could fit closely together for better protection or better fortification. Okay? We all got to recognize that Yahuwah or Yahweh or whatever name that you call, He is our protection. And the flesh is not always dependent on the Most High. It doesn't mean building fortified cities is wrong, but you'll see what I'm saying as I continue in, in reading this. Which verse? 12. 12, thank you. Then the foreigners who were in the strongholds that the Bacchides had built fled. Each left his place and departed to his own land. See, that's the ones that had been occupying the area and even in Jerusalem at that time. And only Bethzur did some remain in the path of Bethzur, did some remain who had forsaken the Torah the word law here again is equal to Torah, and the commandments, two separate things. Okay, we know what the ten are, we know what the Torah is, the law, two separate things. And he says, for it served as a place of refuge, the citadel. Verse 15, now Alexander the king heard of all the, of all the promises which Demetrius had sent to Johanan, and men told him of the battles that Johanan and his brothers, which obviously Yehuda or Yehudas, Judas Maccabus, had fought, and all the mighty deeds that they had done to put fear in people's hearts, see, and had fought of the and had, and had fought, comma, of brave, had fought of the brave bravery. I'm sorry of it. Make sure I'm reading that right. Of the brave bravery, his brothers had fought of the brave deeds that they had done and of the troubles that they had endured. And, and it's many if we listen to the first three teachings that I did. So he said, shall we find another such man? Will we be able to find another man like Johanna? That's the question. Come now. Will we make him our friend and our ally, Demetrius? And he wrote a letter and sent it to him in the following words, I mean, obviously that was King Alexander, I misspoke, please forgive me. Verse 18, King Alexander to his brother Johanathan, we have heard about you, okay, and he's not talking that Alexander is his brother, I don't want you to misunderstand that either. He's talking about he's the brother of Judas of Maccabus, okay. We have heard about you, that you are a mighty warrior and worthy to be our friends. So he's getting, they're getting approached by both sides. Okay? So And so we have appointed you today to be high priest of your nation. You are to be called the king's friend. And he sent, and, and obviously this is King Alexander, sent him a purple robe and a golden crown. And you are to take our side and keep friendship with us. Pickle here. It was a pickle going on. Verse 21, so Johanan put the holy garments in the seventh 
put on the holy garments in the seventh month. Okay, so Johann put on these priestly garments that were given to him by King Alexander of the, of, of the month on the seventh month, which would have been the month that we have tabernacles or Sukkot and, and trumpets or Yom Terum, all those of the 160th year. Now, I can't see that how that could be a good thing, in my opinion. At the Feast of Tabernacles, and he recruited troops and equipment with men, them, equipment, equipped them with arms in abundance. When Demetrius heard of these things, the other side that had tried to befriend him, he was grieved and said, What is this we have done? Alexander has gotten ahead of us in forming a friendship with the Yehudim, or with the Jews, to strengthen himself. I also will write them words of encouragement and promise them honor and gifts that I may have their help. So he sent a message to them in the following words. King Demetrius to the nation of the Yehudim, or Jews, greetings. Since you have kept your agreement with us and have continued your friendship with us and have not sided with our enemies, we have heard of it and rejoiced. And now, continue still to keep faith with us, and we will repay you with good for what you do for us, what you do for us. We will grant you many amenities, immunities, in other words, protection, and give you gifts. That's why we're not supposed to be receiving gifts, you know. <laughs> you're going to be persuaded one way or the other, and where should, where should Johanathan been focused on the Most High, not on other people to protect him. Let's listen to what's happening. So let me make sure I read that in context. And Demetrius appointed Apollonus, the governor of Closeria, and I mispronounced that, I'm sure, and he assembled a large force and encamped against Yamana. Are you on verse 29? I must turn two pages. I'm on verse 29. Wow. This is not numbered really very well here. That, that I just noticed that. That's all right. Is it 29? And now I free you and exempt all the Yehudim from payment of tribute or taxes okay, that they would have been paying to them while they were, when Demetrius was in power, and salt tax and crown levies. And instead of collecting the third of the grain, See how greedy a third, you know. Yahuwah's yoke is light. He, you know, he only asked for a tenth. These guys are asking for a third. And the half of the fruit of the trees that I should receive. He's releasing them from that. I release them from this day and, all, and from hereafter. I will not collect them from the land of Yehuda or from the three districts added to it from Samaria and Galilee. From this day and for all time, suspending all taxes. And let Jerusalem and her environs, her tithes, and these again, these are all the things that they're attributed, like that he just covered, and revenues be set apart free from tax. Verse 32. I released also my control of the citadel in Jerusalem. Okay, the fortress that he had in Jerusalem. He's going to give that. If, he'll, if they'll side with him, they're going to let Yohanan total reign over Jerusalem and re take away all taxes and give it to the high priest that he, that he may station it in it men of his own choice to guard it. So he's telling him he could set up the high priest, Yohanan, not be the high priest, but set up the high priest, and he would be able to guard the temple in Jerusalem. Verse 33. And every one of the Yehudim taken as a captive from the land of Yehuda into any part of my kingdom I set free without payment. See, he had people captive in the temple and everywhere we just read that were released. And let all officials cancel also the taxes on their cattle or their 
chattel in this case, and that's talking about goats, sheep, what we call cattle, all of those. Verse 34. And then he says, And all the feasts and Shabbats or Sabbaths and new moons and appointed days and the three days before a feast and the three days after a feast. So he's coming at him, you know, saying, Hey, I'll let you have free reign to keep the feast, and I will even give you three days before and three days after. He says, Let them all be the days of immunity and release for all the Yehudim who are in my kingdom, that live within his kingdom, not just in Jerusalem, okay, because he occupied all the land in that area before Alexander became, came and started to reign. No one shall have authority to exact anything from them or annoy any of them about any matter. He's basically offering them complete freedom to practice what their faith, to do whatever. Verse 36. Because he sees that they're already setting up with Alexander Epiphanes. Okay? Verse 36. Let the Yehudim be enrolled in the king's forces to the number of 30,000 men. So he wants them to enlist in the military. 30,000. He needs them. And, to, and, the, and let the maintenance be given them that is due, in other words, the payment, which you pay a soldier, he's considering maintenance here, to all the forces of the king. Let some of them be stationed in the great strongholds, where Demetrius has strongholds, of the king, and let some of them be put in positions of, of trust in the kingdom, in other words, like reserves, okay, when someone's in the reserve, they're, they're, they're ready to act, but they're not out in active duty. That's what's talking about here. So let their officers and leaders be of their own number. In other words, any officers and leaders that you recruit from the Yehudim, let their officers and leaders come out of their number, if you understand what I'm saying. In other words, he wasn't going to impose his people over those Yehudim that enlisted. And he said, and let them live by their own Torah, or right rulings in Hebrew, okay? Just as the king has commanded in the land of Yehuda. He just did that in this letter, not prior to that. Verse 38. As for the three districts that I have been that have been added to the to Yehuda from the country of Samaria, which where it's where the northern tribes had met. Okay? what we call the lost tribes, let them be so annexed to Yehuda. Well, he's really offering a lot out of his kingdom for their camaraderie or their, or their enlistment. That they are considered to be under one ruler and obey no other authority but what? The high priest. Well, that's exactly what Israel wanted. And, and I can't see that this might not, this could have came straight from the Most High, you know, because he, they're going to, they would be allowed to practice whatever they are. Now, verse 39, Tolomus and the land adjoining it, I have given as a gift to the sanctuary in Jerusalem. Ooh, okay, that's a problem. Where was Al Alexander Epiphanes? He was in this city, okay? So he's trying to you get you to play the, the Yehudim to go in and take the land that's in this town of, Tol uh, of Ptolemus. Okay? So he says, And the land adjoining it I have given as a gift to the sanctuary in Jerusalem to meet the necessary expenses of the sanctuary. So if you, if you can take that area back from Alexander Epiphanes, then you can use that to support the temple. Okay? I also grant 15,000 shekels of silver yearly out of the king's revenues from appropriate places. And all the additional funds which the government officials have not paid as they did in the first years, they will give from now on for the service of the temple. Okay? So they're going to, not only they're going to give them all these things, but he's also going to pay them to be able to keep, you know, the uh, temple upkept. Properly. Verse 42, Moreover, or in addition, the 5,000 shekels of silver which my officials have received every year from the income of the service of the temple, so they were taxing everything, 
this is two, this two is canceled. So he's basically relieving them of any, you know, expenses if they'll side with him. Because it belongs to the priest, the Kohen. The tithes and offerings that were collected in the church belong to the priests. Read the, read the Torah. It'll tell you what a lot of those things were to do. Okay? <coughs> who ministered or served there. And, who, and whoever takes refuge at the temple. Because the temple is a sanctuary. That's why they call these areas inside of a meeting room and assembly the sanctuary. Okay? It is a sanctuary. Okay? So it's what he's talking about. Whoever takes refuge at the sanctuary in the temple in Jerusalem or in any of its precincts, cordoned off areas like counties. You, you, we have precincts here. You got precinct committeemen. You have all kinds. This is the same language. Actually, that's where we got it from. It's from the scripture. Okay? Because he owes money to the king or has de any debt, let him be released and receive back all his property in my kingdom. He's going to give all the property back to everybody they took it away from. Wow. Demetrius is really desperate for the, for the, to ally with the Yehuda. Okay? Because they've obviously seen what, Yohan, what Yohanan has done, what the rest of his brothers, and what Yehuda Maccabus did while he was in, not before he died. Okay? Verse 44 says, let the cost of rebuilding and restoring the structure of the sanctuary after the pagans had went in there and offered swine on, this, on the altar and all these, how they had completely done all these things. Now they're taking this all back. He said, be paid from the revenues of the king to restore it to its original glory. That's what he's wanting to do. And he said, going to take that revenues from directly from the king, which is Demetrius, and who's writing this letter. Verse 45, And let the cost of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and fortifying it round about, and the cost of rebuilding the walls of, Ye of Yehuda, okay, the whole area, also be paid from the revenues of the king. I, I think he's biting off a lot more than he can chew with this because the king has been in war all this time and he's spending a lot of money on all the troops and doing everything he has, so he's making promises he probably can't keep. Okay? You have to understand, he really don't have this much money. If you listen to the other lessons that I did previous, you know, he's, he's done this before. He's offered to do things that he really wasn't able to keep. Okay? So he says, paid from the revenues of the king. Verse 46, when Johanan, or Johanathan, and the people heard these words, they did not believe or accept them. They, you know, they couldn't. Because he said all these kind of things before, and then he killed them. Okay, so he's two-timer. You know, so you can't really trust him. But he's offering all these things because he's afraid of Alexander Epiphanes. Okay, this guy's getting ready to clean his clock, and he knows it. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Because they remember the great wrongs which Demetrius had done in Israel, and how he had greatly oppressed them. See, you can't, I mean, you know, you can forgive people, but sometimes things that they do, it's kind of hard to forget, okay? If somebody's pulled stunts like that in the past, you better make sure you're wise and understand what's going on in the present. They favored Alexander. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we're going to have to read on and make our own judgment on Because really, Israel, if they wanted to be in Yahuwah or Yahweh's favor, would be leaning to him as they had always done, and he'd always delivered them from these type of enemies and problems that they had to leave. But they, but see, Israel as a nation was always stiff-necked, and and people are of uh, general are stiff-necked like that. They'll believe him when he's there producing the miracles, but when things get tough, that's that's when they they, they start crying into him because why are these things happening? Okay, let's continue. Verse forty-eight. Then Alexander the king assembled large forces and encamped opposite Demetrius. Okay, so now they're getting ready to wipe him out. The two kings met in battle, and the army and the army of Demetrius fled. And see, that was what was going to happen anyway, whether Yehuda 
got with them or not because they were a great army and they had oppressed Israel. We just read that. What does the scripture say about anybody that oppresses Israel? There's going to be a curse on them. Okay? So this was inevitable this was going to happen. He said, And Alexander pursued him and defeated him. He pressed the battle strongly until the sun went down, till sunset. And Demetrius fell on that day. Okay? Demetrius fell. What do you think they mean by that? Okay? Verse 51. Then Alexander sent ambassadors to Ptolemy, king of Egypt. Okay, so now we're talking about Ptolemy, the king of Egypt, with the following message. Since I have returned to my kingdom, and have taken my seat on the throne of my fathers, because he, his father had had that area prior to that, and established my rule, for I crushed Demetrius and gained control of our country. So get back. And I met him in battle. That also includes Jerusalem and, and, and the whole nation of Yehuda. Okay? And he and his army were crushed by us, and we have taken our seat on the throne of His kingdom. Now, therefore, or for this reason, let us establish friendship with one another. Make allies. Scripture warns all of us, and this guy's a pagan, so he's not, he's not held to that, about making allies of your enemies. Because you can't trust an enemy. Okay? Give me now your daughters as my wife, and I will become your son-in-law. See, intermarry and then we're one blood deal. See, that's why Yahuwah or Yahweh didn't want the children of Israel mixing with the people of the other lands. What's going to happen when you do that? You're going to get taken over by all their gods. Elohim. Okay? Other Elohim. That's what's going on. This is how you got the Egyptian gods that are show up in the other you know, pagan countries as under different names. It's the same thing because of all this intermarrying and interweaving of their faith, their beliefs. Okay? And we'll make gifts to you and to her keeping with your position. In other words, you're going to be king over there and I'm going to be over here, but we're really going to be one nation. Okay? Verse 55, Ptolemy, the king, replied and said, Happy was the day on which you return, your return to the land of your fathers. Now, he's being wise here because he fears Alexander Epiphanes. Okay? This is not uh, be all because, oh, it's okay, we're allies. Okay? They're, they're being what they consider wise, okay? which we know what the Scripture says about why. The wisdom of men is what? Foolishness to the Most High. Okay? He says, of the land your fathers and took your seat on the throne of their kingdom, Notice he said, you took your seat on their kingdom. And now I will do for you as you wrote, but meet me at Ptolemus, the city of Ptolemus. And obviously that's where Alexander Epiphanes had started his reign. So that we may see one another, and I will become your father-in-law as you have said. See, now he's brought them into the family, see. Now you don't have to fear Egypt, and Egypt don't have to fear, fear the Greeks or Alexander Epiphanes. Okay? Verse 57, So Ptolemy set out from Egypt, he and Cleopatra, his daughter, and came to Ptolemus in the 160th year since Alexander the Great took over. 62, second year. Thank you for the correction. The 62nd year since Alexander the Great had come. I try to kind of keep us in context on those dates. And Alexander Epiphanes, the king, met him and Ptolemy gave him Cleopatra, his daughter, the most famous of all the women of Egypt ever. Okay, Cleopatra. Okay. In marriage and celebrated her wedding at Ptolemus with great pomp as kings do. Don't they? Verse 59. Then Alexander the king wrote to Johannathan to come to meet him. So he went with pomp. In other words, you know what pomp is? That's with all splendor and decorations and, and all that to Ptolemus. In other words, he, they, they came in with all their best armor and you know they looked good. Okay? And met the two kings. He gave them and their friends silver and gold. 
he, 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 he's almost bound down worship and giving tithes here almost, okay? And many gifts and found favor with them. We need to have favor with the Most High. We don't have to have favor among men. A group of the pestilent, of the pestilent men from Israel, uh, pestilent men are obviously the, the ones that don't fear and keep Yahuwah's commands, commandments, okay? Men from Israel, lawless men, okay? Without the Torah, without the right rulings, gathered together against him to accuse him, Yohanathan. But the king paid no attention to them, okay? The king gave orders to take off Yohanan's garments and to clothe him in purple. He already made him high priest over all his people. And they did so. The king also seated him at his side, and he said to his officers, Go forth with him into the middle of the city and proclaim that no one is to bring charges against him about any matter. In other words, all these lawless men, it, they better be quiet or else we're going to do away with them. Okay? To bring charges against him about any matter. And let no one annoy him. Not, even, not, not hurt him, but don't even let him annoy him or cause him any grief. For any reason. And when his accusers saw the honor that was paid unto him, Johanan, in the accordance with the proclamation or agreement that he made with Alexander Epiphanes, and saw him clothed in purple, they all fled. Thus the king honored him and enrolled him among his chief friends, his best friends, okay? and made him general and governor of the province. And Johanan returned to Jerusalem in peace and in gladness. Okay? Verse 67, and in the 165th year since Alexander took unified Greece, Demetrius, the son of Demetrius, or Demetrius II, came from Crete to the land of his fathers. He'd been in the area of Crete, which is part of Greece, island off the coast of Greece. When Alexander the king heard of it, he was greatly, he was greatly grieved and returned to Antioch. Well, we're all familiar with all these places, especially from the New Testament. Okay? And Demetrius appointed Apollonius, or Apollonius, the governor of Closia. And I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I didn't really think about that before. I should have looked that up, how to pronounce it. And he assembled a large force and encamped against Hamania. Then he sent the following message to, to Johanathan, the high priest. See, who is supposed to be the high priest? It, it, it had to come from the, 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 the Zodokite priesthood, which comes from the, from the ancestors of Phineas and Aaron, okay? And which he, Johanan is not, okay? He is of the Yehudim, okay? So, and, and it's, it had to be a certain lineage. It can't just be appointed to the spot. Later on, Israel was doing that again you know, in the afterwards. Okay? So, he, he's being called the high priest here. Verse 70, you are the only one to rise up against us. And I have become a laughingstock and reproach because of you. Wow. Already, see, it's turning why do you assume authority against us in, in the hill country? If you now have confidence in your forces, now you're going to rebel against us, come down to the plain to meet us. What do you think? Meet us in battle is what he's talking about. If you really got confidence, he's threatening him. He says, and let us match strength with each other. There. For I have with me the power of the cities. And you're the rule country. That's what Johanan and the those had been given authority in was the rule country. He says, ask and, and learn who I am and who the others are that are helping us. Men will tell you that you cannot stand before us for your fathers were twice put to flight in their own land. Verse 73, and now you will not be able to withstand my cavalry and such an army in the plain. Okay. 
where there is no stone or pebble or place to flee on the flat ground, okay? Some would say on the flat earth here, okay? I'm just saying, okay? This is talking about a, a, a field or an area where there's no place to hide, okay? Verse 74, when Johanathan heard the words of Apollyonis, his spirit, and that's talking about his mind, will, and emotion. It's not talking about some immortal thing that's in him. He's saying his, his intellect was telling him, was aroused. He chose 10,000 men and set out from Jerusalem, and Simon his brother met with him to help him. He encamped before Joppa, or Joppa, but the men of the, of the city chose closed its gates, for Apollyonis had a garrison in Joppa, so they fought against it. And the men of the city became afraid and opened the gates, and Johanathan gained possession of Yahweh. Because they are still the people of Israel, even if they're cut off. Okay? Verse 77. Lots going on. Things still change. Verse 77. When Apollyonis heard of it, he mustered or he gathered 3,000 cavalrymen and a large army and went to Azotus. Okay? As though he were give, going further. At the same time, he advanced into the plains, for he had a large troop of cavalry. Okay? That would be on horseback or on elephant or, what, or whatever. And put confidence in, in it. Johanathan put, pursued him to Ostus, whatever how that's pronounced, and the armies engaged in battle. Now, Polyanus had secretly left a, th left a thousand uh, cavalry, okay, mounted troops behind them. And Johanan learned that there was an ambush behind him, so someone made him aware. For they surrounded his army and shot arrows at his men from early morning till late afternoon. But his men stood fast as Johanan commanded, and the enemy's horses grew tired. Verse 82, the, then Simon brought forward his force and engaged the Phylaxenus in battle. Okay? And it's got in parentheses, for the cavalry was exhausted. Telling them, you know, they're, they're running out of gas, guys. They're not going to be able to fight much longer. This Phylaxenus is, is, is battlery machinery. Okay? Whether it be catapults, you know, or armored things that men hid inside of, but this is what they're talking about there, in battle, for the cavalry was exhausted. They were overwhelmed by him and fled, and the cavalry was dispersed in the plain. The men that were attacking Johanan were dispersed. They fled to Ozdus and entered into Beth Dagon. Beth Dagon, you should take that, that's a Dagon, the god of the Philistines, okay? That's where the name comes from. The temple of I of the I of their idol, Dagon. Okay? For safety. But Johanan burned Asdoth and the surrounding towns and plundered them. And the temple of Dagon and those who had taken refuge in it burned with fire. The number of those who fell by the sword without without were thousands without with those burned alive, I'm sorry came to 8,000 men. That's a lot that fell that day. Verse 86, Then Johanan departed from there and encamped against Ascalon. And the men of the city came out to meet him with great pomp. Again, another great, great uh, all the decorations and all that as kings and things would come. And Johanan, or Johanathan, and those with him returned to Jerusalem with all the booty or plunder. When Alexander the king heard of these things, he honored Johanan still more, and he sent him a, a golden buckle. See, he's fighting for Alexander Epiphanes. Okay, so he's doing the things that Alexander Epiphanes wants him to do. Okay, he's holding off Demetrius or those troops, of the troops of Demetrius. Such as it is, such as it is the custom to give the kinsmen of the king. So he's considering Johanathan his kinsman. 
Okay? And, and, and this is all buying in to something that Israel should be buying into. He also gave him Ekron and all its environs, okay? Or the, the, the booty and things that comes with that from taxation and different things as his possession. Chapter 11. That's a long chapter, wasn't it? Then the king of Egypt gathered great forces like the sand by the seashore and many ships. And he tried to get possession of Alexander's kingdom by trickery, okay, and added it to his own kingdom. He set out of Syria with peaceable words, and the people of the city opened their gates to him and went to meet him, for Alexander the king had commanded them to meet him since he was Alexander's father-in-law, okay, talk about Ptolemy, or the king of Egypt here, okay, was his father-in-law, okay, but when Ptolemy, the king of Egypt, entered the cities, he stationed forces at the garrison in each city, okay, these are the forces that are opposing Alexander, verse 4, he approached Azordus, so they're, they're, getting, they're getting ready to try to trick him, with trickery, remember, they, they showed the temple of Dagon burned down and asked us, and it said, and its suburbs or outlying areas destroyed, and the corpses lying around, and carried bodies of those whom Jonathan or Johanan had burned in the war, for they had piled them in heaps along his route. They also told the king what Johanan had done to throw blame on him, but the king kept silent. Johanan met the king at Joppa with great pomp, and they greeted one another and spent the night there, and Johanan went with the king as far as the river Elethiris. Elethiris. Then he returned to Jerusalem. Here's King Ptolemy, uh, uh, Ptolemy again of, of Egypt. So King Ptolemy gained control of the coastal cities as far as Silas, Silica. By the sea, and he kept dev devising evil designs against Alexander. He was trying to he, through trickery, as it said earlier. He sent envoys to Demetrius. See, he's still in the picture, as I mentioned earlier. The king saying, "Come, let us make a covenant or agreement, okay, together, so that they can overcome Al uh, uh, Alexander with each other." And I will give you in marriage my daughter, who was Alexander's wife. Okay, wow. You're going to take away Cleopatra now and give him to this other man. And you shall reign over your father's kingdom. Talking to Demetrius, for I now know, for I now regret that I gave him my daughter, for he was tired, he, he has tried to kill me. He threw blame on Alexander because he coveted coveted his kingdom. So Alexander didn't do that, but he blamed him for that because he wanted his kingdom. Greed. The same thing that gets all of us. That's that flesh. Okay? So he took his daughter away from him, from Alexander Epiphanes, and gave her to Demetrius. See, Johanan has attached these people, himself to these type of people. Brother, the world. That's what he's done. He's given his authority over to these people. And they're backbiting, going back and forth, and he's in the middle. Let's keep, let's keep reading. At, at to Demetrius. He was estranged from Alexander, and their enmity or division became known, manifest. Verse 13. And Ptolemy entered Antioch and put on the crown of Asia, the whole area. Okay? Being here like Nebuchadnezzar, the king of kings. That's what this is all about. They all want to be the king of the earth. They want to rule the whole earth. Same thing Satan wanted to do. Ha Satan, Lucifer. He wanted to overthrow the Most High and take his seat as Theon or the Most High and stand over the Most High. That's what the men are no different. That's what they do. That's what the flesh is all about. That's what we have to be careful of. So he, 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 bought, he put on the crown of Asia. You have to, if you look at the map during that time, that was pretty much the, the known area. Okay? And he said, thus he put two crowns upon his head. Not just one, but two. The crown of Egypt and that of Asia. 
took over the whole area. That's what Nebuchadnezzar had done. And they called him king of kings. Now Alexander the king was in Sicilia at that time because the people of the region were in revolt. Okay. And Alexander heard of it and came against him in battle and told him he marched out and met him with a strong force and put him to flight. So Alexander fled into Arabia to find protection there and King Ptolemy was exalted. And, and Zabdael, the Arab, which we know what he's talking about when he's talking about Arab, he's talking about Edomite nation or those ones that are of the descendants of Esau and his uh, father-in-law. Okay, we'll go with that. Cut off the head of Alexander and sent it to Ptolemy. So Alexander, the one that uh, Johanan had allied to himself originally, now his head's been cut off and sent to Ptolemy. Verse 18, but King Ptolemy died three days later. All this going on all around them and they're making allies in this, but yet you, the, the father's still protecting Johanan from this. And, the, and, and his troops in the strongholds were killed by the inhabitants of the strongholds. See, both of them now, kingdoms have fell. So Demetrius became king in the 167th year since Alexander the Great united Greece. Verse 20. In those days, Johanan assembled the men of Yehuda to attack the citadel because they still didn't have complete control of the city of Jerusalem or the temple because of all the people in the land, Demetrius's men and different ones, okay, in the Jerusalem. And he built many engines of war. That's these things, that's these, uh, we just read over here, Phylaxinix, or Phylaxinix, that's what he's talking about, many engines of war to use against it. But certain lawless men, okay, Israelites included in that, okay, men who hated their nation, Israel, went to the king and reported to him that Johanathan was besieging the citadel, which is Jerusalem. Okay? When he heard this, he was angry. And as soon as he heard it, he set out to come to Ptolemus. Uh, I'll get back. Too many words with silent P's. And he wrote Johanathan not to continue the siege, but to meet him for a conference at Ptolemus as quickly as possible. Okay? 23. When Johanathan heard this, he gave orders to continue the siege, and he chose some of the elders of Israel. Okay? And he's talking about the Yehudim here. Okay? Or Judah. The nation of Judah. But it could have been even some from the northern tribes, as we also know that Samaria was part of that deal that was made. Okay? And some of the Kohenim, or priests, okay, and put himself in danger. For he went to the king at Ptolemus, taking silver and gold, okay, gifts, and clothing, and numerous other gifts, and he won his favor. Although certain lawless men of his nation kept making complaints against him, because they, they didn't want to keep the Torah. If we watch the previous videos, you'll see that when the uh, Alexander's predecessor that was there, he told him to th get rid of all your worship of the Most High and, and worship our gods. Okay? And a lot of those people said, Amen to that. We're, we're willing to do whatever. We're going to do your ways and we're going to get rid of our ways. These are the lawless men he's talking about here of Israel. Okay, you got to keep that in context. He says, men of his nation kept making complaints against him. The king treated him as his predecessors, those before him, had treated him. He exalted Johanathan, okay, him in the presence of all his friends. Now, we can see the power of the Most High in all this. Amen. I mean, we, we, we could see that, you know, you know, all these different ones, but, but we see Daniel. Let's, let's use Daniel as an example. Daniel never yielded to the king. He, not in that. Not when it came to things that were against the Most High. He 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 would not eat of the delicacies of the king, and we know what those delicacies are. They're the unclean things. And so he said, "Just give me vegetables." And he proved 
to Nebuchadnezzar that his Elohim was the Elohim of Elohims. See, you don't see any of this kind of talk or goings on at this point. But, but the Most High is still protecting Israel because He's preserving an elect that's going to be brought into the kingdom, but not the nation as a whole. Okay, Not the whole nation of Israel. Only some of those will be part of that elect that we're going to be talking about in our next lesson. He confirmed him in, in the high priesthood. Okay, The king confirmed Johanathan in the high priesthood, or in other words, reiterated, and in as many other honors as he formerly had. So he kept, he's keeping his agreement. And made him to be regarded as one of his best friends. Okay? Oh, that's all man, that's all fleshly stuff, guys. And he didn't really love him. He was using him. Okay? And he was and Johanathan was allowing himself to be used. Verse 28. Then Johanathan asked the king to free Yehuda. Now he's saying, okay, let us go. Let us be our own nation. And three districts of Samaria. Why three districts of Samaria? Because the brotherhood of Israel was in that area then. The northern tribes that had, you know, left with at the, back in the time when the nations were divided. Okay, that's why Samaria. For a tribute. Okay? And promised him 300 talents. The king consented and wrote a letter to Johanathan about all these things it contends were as follows. Here's what he said. Verse 30. King Demetrius to Johanathan, his brother, and to the nation of the Yehudim. Greetings. This copy of the letter which we wrote concerning you to Lasthenius, our, king, our kinsman, we have written to you also, so that you may know what it says. King Demetrius to Lasthenius, his father, greetings to the nation of the Yehudim, or, or Judah, or the Jews, who are our friends and fulfill their obligation to us. We have determined to do good because of the good we, of the good will they show towards us. We have confirmed as their possession both the territory of Yehuda and the three districts of Alphramia and Lydia, or Lydia, and Rathamon, the letter, the latter, with, the, with all the region bordering them were added to Yehuda from Samaria, from, Ju from Yehuda to Samaria, to all those who offer sacrifices in Jerusalem. Whoever comes down to Jerusalem to keep the feast, he's going to give them freedom. We have granted release from the royal taxes, which the king formerly received from them each year, from the crops of the land, the fruits of the trees, and the others. This is the same offering that Alexander Epiphanes had offered them. Okay, he's he's gonna he's gonna go ahead and give, and the other payments henceforth due to us of the tithes and the taxes due to us and the salt tax and the crown taxes due to us. From all these, we will grant them release, and not one of these grants shall be canceled. From this time forth or forever. So, thus it is written. The, the king puts his seal on, and thus it'll be. Okay? And the next king and the next king are supposed to honor that after him. You know? It's no difference than when uh, the other kings that followed Nebuchadnezzar, they did they followed the orders of the kings before them. He said, verse 37, he says, Now for this reason, or therefore. Take care to make a copy of this. In other words, we're going to make sure we keep this safe and let it be given to Johanan, so he, Johanathan so he can put it in safekeeping and put it in a conspicuous place or a place where conspicuous, I got it out, a conspicuous place on the set-apart mountain. I mean, he's talking about Zion, Mount Zion and Jerusalem area. Verse 38, Then when Demetrius the king saw the land, was quiet before him, and there was no opposition to him. Now, that had to be the most high behind that. There was no other way that all would have happened and came down. Even though Israel didn't come by it quite as they should have. Okay, But God did work that way. He did that with Yosef. 
you know, when Yosef was in Egypt. And, but, but Yosef stuck to the commands of the Most High and he showed the, the king of Egypt at that time, the Pharaoh, that the Most High was the Most High. We, do we see that here? That's my question. Okay. He dismissed all his troops, each man to his own place, to go home because he, he, there was no opposition. He didn't need an army. And that's Torah. Okay, You don't need to be ready, prepared to fight all the time. It's except the foreign troops, which were in other areas, which he had recruited from the islands of the nations. Okay, It could have been translated Gentile, same word. Okay? These other nations. So he had recruited these people. They were not his people. They were others. So all the troops who had served his fathers hated him. Verse 39, Now Trypho had formerly been one of Alexander's supporters, Alexander Epiphanes. He saw that all the troops were murmuring against Demetrius. So, uh oh, here's my opportunity. So he went to Amlicu, the Arab, okay, we know who those people are, we don't have to go over that every time, who is bringing up Antiochus, the young son of Alexander. Now notice he's given him his father's name, his son, Alex Antiochus, Epiphanes. Over to him to become king in the place of his father, he also reported to Imlicu what Demetrius had done and told of the hatred which the troops of Demetrius had for him. And he stayed there many days. Verse 41, Now Johanathan sent to Demetrius the king the request that he remove the troops from the citadel from Jerusalem, making sure you understand, and the troops in the strongholds, for they kept fighting against Israel. No matter what they did, they kept on fighting Demetrius and all those that kept coming against Israel. And Demetrius sent this message to Johanathan. Not only will I do these things for you are you and your nation, but I will confer great honor on you and your nation if I find an opportunity. Verse 43, Now then, you will do well to send me men who will help me, for all my troops have revolted. So Johanathan sent 3,000 stalwart or strong men to him at Antioch. And when they came to the king, the king rejoiced at their arrival. Then the men of the city assembled with the city within the city to the number of a hundred and twenty thousand. That's a lot of men. And they and they wanted to kill the king. But the king fled into the palace. Then the men of the city seized the main streets of the city and began to fight so that the king called the Yehudim to his aid. And they all rallied about him and then spread out through the city and they killed on that day as many as a hundred thousand men. Wow! They set fire to the city and seized much spoil on that day and they saved the king. When the, when the men of the city saw that the Yehudim had gained control of the city as they pleased, their, their courage failed and they cried out to the king with this entreaty or this prayer or this request. Okay? Grant us peace and make the Yehudim stop fighting against us. Stop them, please. And our city, and they threw down their arms and made peace. So the Yehudim gained honor in the eyes of the king and all the people in his kingdom, and they returned to Jerusalem much spoil. So Demetrius the king sat at the throne of his kingdom, and the land was quiet before him. But he broke his word about all that he had promised. See, that's what the kings of the world do. They break their promise. No matter what they promise, you can't trust them. They're going to break their promise because they're not of the, the Most High. They don't care anything about it that. They're caring about themselves. And he became estranged from Jonathan. Cut off. See, he's right back where he was again. And did not repay the favors which Johanan had done him, but oppressed him greatly. With the old saying, you can fool some of the people all the time. You can 
And you can even fool all the people some of the time. You can't fool all the people all the time. You can't ever fool the Most High. See, if, you, if, if, you're, if, if your faith is in Him, you don't have to go through all this nonsense that they're going through. Okay? But it wasn't. You know, in the, in the other times, like when you know Israel was sent off into captivity in Babylon, the father spoke to the prophets and told them to submit themselves to these guys and, and, and live in peace because of the punishment that was being placed on them. There was no exchange here at all because there's no prophet in Israel and they're not telling them. So what are they doing? They're doing what's right in their own mind. And we could see the consequences of that. That's what's going on today as well. That's why we have wars and rumors of wars continually. Okay, that's what this is telling us. 54. After this trif trifle returned, and with him the young boy Antiochus, okay, son of Alexander, who began to reign and put on the crown, Alexander Epiphanes, okay, all the troops that Demetrius had cast off from him, gathered around him. And they fought against Demetrius, see? Wars and rumors of wars. Nothing ever changes. You can't trust people to keep their agreements. Salt agreement or not. You can't. Okay? And he fled and was routed. And Trifo captured the elephants. Because they, they rode elephants as well as horses at that time in battle. Okay? And the young Antiochus wrote to Jonathan, Johanathan, saying, I confirm, you, or I confirm you in the high priesthood and set you over the four districts and make you one of the friends of the king, making alliances with these pagan nations that Israel was <coughs> never supposed to do. Okay? And he sent him gold plate and a table service and granted him the right to drink from the gold cups and dressed in purple and wear a gold buckle. Simon his brother made governor for from the ladder of Tyre. That's not ladder, it's ladder, okay, like you climb. Okay. <laughs> to the borders of Egypt. And, that, and they're, they're calling that land the ladder to Tyre. Okay. To get to, to the border of, of Egypt. Verse 60. Then Johanathan set forth and traveled beyond the river. Okay. And among the cities. And all the army of, uh, of Syria gathered to him as his allies when he came to Ascalon. And the people of the city met him and paid him honor. From there he departed to Gaza. We all know where Gaza is now. There's still a lot of chaos going on in Gaza today. But the men of Gaza shut, shout him out. Shut him out. I'm sorry, not shout him out. Shut him out. So he besieged it and burned its suburbs or surrounding areas with fire and plundered them. The people of Gaza pleaded with Johanathan, and he made peace with them, and took their sons, or their men in Hebrew, of their rulers as hostage, and, set, and sent them to Jerusalem. And he passed through the country as far as Damascus. Verse 63, Then Johanan, Johanathan heard that the officers of Demetrius had come to Kadesh in Galilee, with a large army intending to remove him from the office. He went to meet them, but left his brother Simon in the country. 65, 6, Simon camped before Bethzur and fought against it for many days and hemmed it in. Okay, so he had them cut off and where they couldn't escape. Then they asked him to grant them terms of peace, and he did so. He removed them from there, took possession of the city, and set a garrison over it. And Johanathan and his army encamped by the waters of Genezareth. Genezareth. We know what the Sea of Galilee is also called the Sea of Genezareth, just so for geographic sake here. Okay? Early in the morning they marched to the plain of Hazor. And behold, the army of the foreigners met him in the plain on the flat earth, okay, on the flat ground, okay, in the plain. Okay. They had set an ambush against him in the mountains, but they themselves met him face to face. Okay? So he, they had an ambush, they wanted to get an advantage, but they also met him face to face. They 
uh, cavalry against cavalry, they charged each other. Then the men in the ambush emerged from their places and joined battle. All the men with Johanna, Johanathan. So they kind of surrounded them. In other words, they met them here, and then all this other ones came from the outside and attacked, fled. And it said, all the men with Johanan fled. Wow. Not one of them was left except Matthias, okay, the son of Absalom. These are all familiar names from us. Not any of those are the same as we read in the Tanakh. These are people named after people in the Tanakh. And Yehuda, okay, just like Yehuda Iscariot, the son of Caliphi, commanders of the forces of the army, Johanathan tore his garment and put dust on his head and prayed. And I'll tell you this, even Yehudas Maccabus prayed and said, Give all the glory to the Most High. He says, For He will fight before us. You didn't hear any of that talk in any of this, did you? you? See what's happening now? And that's what will happen. You trust in your own strength or the strength of other nations, you're, you're fixing to fall. Okay? He, now He's praying. He, he put dust on His head. And He prayed. Then He turned back to the battle against the enemy and routed them. Why didn't he do that to begin with? Why weren't, wasn't he submitting to the Most High all the time? Okay? When his men were fleeting, fleeing, saw this, they returned to him and joined him in the pursuit as far as Kadesh to their camp. And, their, and they encamped or set up camp. As many as 3,000 of the foreigners fell that day and Johanathan returned to Jerusalem. So, there's much more to the story. It's going to go back and forth, back and forth, and continue in that, but we're going to end it right there because we went a little over an hour. Okay? But we try to keep it at an hour for people's attention span. Okay, but we're going to begin part five. Okay, at chapter 12, and we'll be doing that next seven. Okay? But when you, we have to be trusted in the Most High all the time. Okay, when we turn to the Most High, He is faithful and just to deliver us. That's what we need to see from these lessons, brothers. If Johanathan would have kept focused on the Most High and not done a lot of these decisions that he did, it's obvious that he would save them. He's always preserved an elect of His physical people as well as others from all nations. And He will always continue to do that. But it's going to be the faithful. Later we're going to be reading Romans chapter 9. Okay? We're going to read that and we're going to think about that. Okay? We're going to see how that we need to be grafted into Israel and that He only preserved an elect of those physical people. He was doing that here as we, walk, we read in the book of the Maccabees. Okay? He was preserving a remnant, but only to those that feared Him and kept His commandments. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, again, we would ask you to do so as there's no charge to subscribe. Okay? Please, if you subscribe, if, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up on the YouTube page, not necessarily just on Facebook, but on YouTube, because YouTube's algorithms they, they like the likes on there, okay? So the more people give it a thumbs up, more people are going to see it pop up, and they're going to get an opportunity to watch the video. So please subscribe, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and then if you really like it, share it on your Facebook page so others might see it as well. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.